how to grasp truth. Well, to what is truth? What are we hunting for? What are we trying to grasp? Well, truth is not any system of speculative philosophy. Truth is not a theory of any sort. It cannot be. Truth is not intellectual understanding. What is truth? Reality. Truth is reality, the underlying numenor of this phenomenal world. We see this book, and we say, oh, yes, that's the Bible. But that's not the reality of this book. The underlying reality is what? That it is made up of vibrating light atoms. And that when this book is lost or destroyed, what remains? Truth remains. What it really is, the underlying noumena remains. This is the phenomena. The noumena is the substance of which this book is created, the original substance. And this underlying noumena, or truth, or reality, cannot be known by outward implement of sensation, mind, and intellect. It's impossible. But it can be known by the soul's power, which is within us, known as intuition. And so I might say, just in passing, if your intuition was highly developed, you would see this book vibrating. Light atoms vibrating. Now, if you can concentrate enough to shut out all other things, you will see it as that. Not many do, though. So let us realize that if we're going to understand truth, we must know what we're trying to understand, and that is reality. Not what we think. Not what the senses tell us. Not what the mind coordinates. Not what the intellect discriminates. But what the intuition of our soul, the presence of God within us, tells us, assures us, completely and fully. Only through that means can we know truth. Let us not forget that. Now we have an illustration of this in Jesus' own words. And he says quite pointedly how to grasp truth, what we must do to grasp truth. In St. John, the 18th chapter, 37th verse, we read, To this end, Jesus says, was I born, and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto truth. Now let us stop there and take that I should bear witness unto truth. That I, surely not his body, surely not his personality, because that was completely done away with. Therefore the I is the Christ consciousness that bears witness of truth. You understand the difference? It is that underlying reality which is in Je was in Jesus and is in each and every one of us. It is that which bears witness of truth, nothing else. The personality passes away. That's not truth. That's not reality. His body certainly was done away with. But underlying those changeable parts of each and every one of us is an unchangeable conscience which does not pass away. That is the truth, is it not? That is reality. And so Jesus goes on to say, Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now therein is the key. Everyone that is of the truth heareth, heareth my voice. Now Jesus was speaking of the consciousness of truth, of Christ's consciousness, nothing else. Heaven and earth shall pass away, he said, but my words shall not. Not the ordinary words he spoke, but the truth underlying those words which came from Christ's consciousness. That is, that is what does not pass away. And so let us realize what Jesus meant in these words. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. That is, everyone. 
that heareth the voice of Christ consciousness, the holy vibration within us, the great Holy Ghost, the intelligent cosmic vibration, everybody that heareth that, knoweth that, is in truth. Because God's intelligence is in that. His great intelligence is in that. In that great cosmic vibration. The Amen spoken of in the Bible. The beginning and the end of creation. Don't you see? That's the underlying noumena of creation. The great cosmic sound. The intelligent vibration. But realize it is not just a vibration giving off light and sound. In it is the intelligence of God. In it is the great power of God. In it is God's love. So it makes a difference, doesn't it? When you realize the underlying noumena of all things is the eternal substance of God, which moving created light. And from that light all things have come. Science has shown that, that all this creation, even the heavy metals and such things which seem so far removed from light are nothing but the product of light atoms vibrating, giving us this delusion of this cosmic dream. And so therein, in the phenomena of light, of which Einstein spoke so many times and gave us so much intuitional knowledge, in the phenomena of light, we find the cause of this creation. That's the underlying noumena. That's the truth. That's what we want to know. We don't want to be fooled by thinking that this cosmic dream is the reality. Although some of us perhaps do want to be fooled. We hate to give it up. We hate to let go of those shining things of worldly consciousness until you suffer enough and realize you must know the underlying truth. The presence of God, nothing more or less than his great presence, which is in everything from the most minute particle of creation to worlds upon worlds. Nothing but his eternal substance moving. The spirit of God moves. That's the truth of the situation. That's the truth of this existence. Let us never forget that. And so, Going on just a little bit, do not forget the <coughs> illustration of light. Everything comes from light. Everything comes from light. Look within yourselves by following the right technique and you will see that light which has made you. You will see that light which has produced you and which sustains you. Then you'll realize it isn't the good food and so forth. It is the light behind the food that utilizes the energy of the food. It is the light behind the oxygen which changes it into life force and utilizes that life force. That's the power behind the throne. That's the noumena behind the phenomena of life. Let us know that and realize that. Now we analyze ourselves. And what do we find? We find a body and its consciousness. And we look about us and we see Bodies disappearing daily into no man's land from whence they came. And we see our own consciousness disappearing under certain conditions. If we're forgetful, if we sleep, if someone hits us a little too hard in the head, where does that consciousness go? Is that reality? Is that bodily consciousness reality? No. Surely not. And even our minds deceive us. Even our minds, we cannot depend on them. Because they do not give us reality. They give us the wrong impressions because they simply coordinate senses. That's all the mind coordinates sensation. And our intellect discriminates. But if the premise is wrong, isn't the discrimination wrong? Certainly. We cannot depend on our minds. Because our minds and our consciousness, our mental consciousness, is not reality. Mind coordinates the senses, that's all. Intellect discriminates between those things which come to us through senses. That is not reality, and we have the practical proof. We as Americans like to know things in a practical way. We see people disappearing all the time. 
And some asked Jesus to say, where is your grandfather and my grandfather? Gone. He says, life is a dream, but underlying this dream of life is the eternal reality of God's presence, his great light, and his great love. That's the reality. That is what we must grasp, the underlying truth. And so we see that we cannot depend on our bodily consciousness or our mental consciousness because why? They're changeable. It's not reality. The only underlying reality is the presence of God within us, which does not change. And so we find that underlying underneath this outward consciousness of body and mind is a stable consciousness which does not change. Haven't you noticed that? You get all confused and your mind runs here and there and your body gives you trouble and you have aches and pains. But when you have a quiet moment, you feel a peaceful consciousness with it. You know you exist, don't you? Well, that's the unchanging part. That's the truth of our existence. That's reality. That part does not change, cannot be hurt, was never born, and therefore never will die. But we are not used to that part. We are not familiar with it. We have to make it our own. And so we read in the Bible, be still, be still, be still, and know that I am God. We read that in the 46th Psalm, the 10th verse. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know God, we might say. Still the mind, the senses, the outward movement. And in the stillness, you will find truth. You will find reality. You will find the presence of God right within you. St. Paul also gave the key in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 31st verse. And he pointed out that in the immaculate silence within, in the immaculate silence within, you will find the answer to this question. What is true? Because in that immaculate silence, in that void within, if you keep at it, that void will give you truth. Because that void which seems so dark and dreary at first, seems so empty. If you persevere within that void, you will find everything. Because God is in the silence within, in the immaculate silence within, you will find a birth of truth. Realize that. As St. Paul said in 15th Corinthians, 1st Corinthians, 15th verse, 15th chapter, 31st verse, words to the effect, I protest by the rejoicing I have in Christ, I die daily. I protest means I declare. By the rejoicing, by the bliss of Christ's consciousness, that he died to outward consciousness, that's all. He didn't die in the ordinary sense. He died to this worldly consciousness, which is transient and passes away, and he knew truth. Because the testimony of his bliss showed he was in Christ's consciousness. I declare, I protest, by the rejoicing I have in Christ, I die daily. That's the underlying truth of existence. And that's why St. Paul said it, because he felt in the Christ consciousness, he felt a new truth, just as Jesus said. He who heareth my voice in the great cosmic vibration is Christ consciousness, because it's the intelligence of God. Those who hear that voice and stay in it, they know truth, and only they know truth. Now, the ancient scriptures of India teach that every human being <clears throat> is created by God from his eternal substance and is a soul which has eternal consciousness and blissful consciousness. The ancient scriptures of India have kept us alive for centuries. And it has been handed down through the various systems which have come from India. And so 
If you want to know truth, follow, follow the teachings which have been handed down throughout the ages because they do not change. The ordinary worldly knowledge changes according to condition. But as Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, he's referring to truth, which is Christ consciousness. That was the same, think of it. That was the same in the time that the Bhagavad Gita was written, 1500 BC. It's the same in Abraham's time. It's the same in Jesus' time. It's the same right now in you and in me. Because that could not change. God could not change. The dream changes. If we look back even 50 years, boy, things have changed, haven't they? But if we meditated at that same time, 50 years ago, we would feel the same Christ consciousness within, because truth does not change. Truth is eternal. Let us realize that. And so underlying this outward consciousness, realize, outward consciousness, realize that each and every one of us is created a human being from, made from the eternal substance of God, in which is that unchanging part, the soul, which is ever conscious and ever blissful. That's the truth about our existence. That's not theory, that's reality. And the Bhagavad Gita has said it, pointed it out most beautifully in the second discourse. The second discourse, the 20th to the 23rd line, in which it says, <clears throat> speaking about the underlying truth of our existence, that consciousness in us which does not change. It says as follows, he is not born, nor doth he die. How can we, made in the image of God, made from his eternal substance, ever die? What dies is the personality. What dies is the outward consciousness of the dream. But underneath that is a consciousness that never was born because it is of God and never will die if we can but know it and keep the continuity of that consciousness. And so it says, going on, nor having been, ceaseth he any more to be, unborn, perpetual, eternal, and ancient. He perishes not in the perishable body. This body we know must be given up. But let us know truth which says within each and every one of us is a consciousness that does not perish, does not change, because the presence of God is our, in us and is our own consciousness. His power is in us, is our own power. His love is in us, is our own love. And so going on as a man, casting off worn-out garments, takes new ones, so the dweller in the body, casting off, Worn out bodies entereth into others that are new. Weapons cleave him not, <coughs> fire burneth not our soul, nor waters wet us. Indeed, neither can be, be wetted or dried. <coughs> All pervasive, <coughs> stable, immovable, ancient, unmanifest, he is called. Therefore, knowing him as thus, knowing your soul within, knowing truth, we should never grieve. We should never feel disturbed because that consciousness is eternal. And so, the great ones of India have kept alive the ways and the means to know this truth. That we must admit. Because all who have followed the techniques which have been given by our beloved Master through Self-Realization Fellowship have contacted, have contacted truth within as the Holy Vibration and the Holy Ghost. I say all those who have followed sincerely have found this underlying truth which does not pass away. In Psalm, the 82nd Psalm, Sixth verse, we read these wonderful words. And let us not forget them. 
I have said. <clears throat> ye are gods, all of you. Not a few, not a favored few, all of you are children of the Most High. Now, isn't that wonderful? And Patanjali Yoga, Patanjali was the father of yoga, that's all. Patanjali Yoga gives us the ways and the means to prove this thing and to know that each and every one of us is a child of God, children of the Most High. These are facts. And self-realization, which incorporates in its teachings, the teachings of Patanjali, will give you the ways and the means of daily living. Not just once in a while on Sunday, but daily living wherein you can know the consciousness of truth within. You can know that the holy vibration has made you and sustains you. And you can know that in that holy vibration is the consciousness of your father and my father. You can know the presence of God because these eternal truths have been incorporated in the teachings of self-realization fellowship. Remember that in daily living, <clears throat> in daily living by practicing the techniques of self-realization fellowship because they are eternal and true, you can contact and know the presence of God within you. Knowing that, knowing that you will repossess your divine heritage, that you are a child of God. That's why self-realization is so important. That's why years ago, when the Master came to Boston in 1920, he said to me, he didn't say, how much money have you got to give me? No, he said one thing. <clears throat> he said to me, the first words he said, as he sat me down and looked at me, what did he say? Doctor, will you always love me as I love you? Is that mercenary? No. That's what he asked me. And I felt that. And then, as we concluded our interview, after he having showed me many of these eternal truths, otherwise I couldn't stand up here and tell you these things, he said, if, if after following the techniques of self-realization, if after finding the truth which comes from following the techniques of self-realization, will you help others to get it? And I said, certainly, surely. And that's what I have been trying to do ever since. Only that one thing, as he lifted me, as he helped me to realize truth and see the difference between outward consciousness and reality, so I have, in my humble way, tried to help others. See that which will give you salvation. The true, truth, the reality, the presence of God within each and every one of us.